In this video, we pick up with the occupational knots listed under the letter D. The first of the two listings is a drayman, which was a driver of a dray or flatbed wagon or sled pulled by horses. Loose turns of a rope twisted tight with a hand spike or pole would be used to secure a load of logs. The dressmaker is next, and Ashley says he was hesitant about drawing attention to this knot since he had only seen it used by sailors. The stitches of this knot form an overhand knot in the fabric. Moving on to the listings for the letter E, we have the electrician. Ashley notes that the knot for this trade is a sailor's wall knot of two strands, and he can recommend it where rough treatment is expected. The second and last listing for the E's is the electric lineman. For hauling a wire to the arm of a pole, Ashley says to use this half sheep shank, which is of the same formation as a bell ringer's knot. The end of a lineman's rope is whipped with adhesive tape, and a single half hitch is used to make a loop or eye. We next go to the listings found under the letter F, starting with the falconer and its one entry. The jess is a short strap that fits around the leg of the bird with a ring on the other end. The farmer follows with a couple of pages of entries. The first entry is the manger hitch, which will not jam when wet. The halter hitch is used for hitching horses and is easily slipped after removing the end from the loop. The cow hitch is said by Ashley to be the proper knot to use to secure a cow to a crowbar. The binder knot is tied in a wisp of straw that is bound around a sheaf of grain. The ends are broad and laid up with a right-handed twist. The doubled end is then laid back on itself and the biter loop is brought up to the right under the binding. An overhand bend with bites tucked instead of the ends is the knot tied by a mechanical binder. The next several knot entries for the farmer pertain to flails, which are tools used by hand to thresh crops. Entry 247 is a flail knot from Diderot's Encyclopedia. The rawhide connecting strap is tied in a becket hitch. Entry 248 is a flail joint that Ashley had only seen used in Bristol County, Massachusetts. 249 is a common fastening used on flails. Entries 250 through 252 show a flail from Chester County, Pennsylvania. The strap goes around three times through a slit and is hitched around all three turns. X turns hold the strap in the groove of the handle and the ends are knotted together with a reef knot. Two round turns are taken around the yoke and then frapping turns hold the strap in the groove. Entry 253 through 256 describe methods for making and attaching a fly, snapper, or stinger to an ox whip. One method to do this involves taking a short narrow thong, doubling it and tying it at the center with a sheet bend to the whip then laying up the fly and tying an overhand knot in the end. Entry 254 describes taking the thongs at the end of the whip and taking a half knot with each strand in turn around the other three. Entry 255 describes whipping the ends of the whip. For entry 256, the fly is laid up for several inches and then a two-strand Matthew Walker knot is tied near the end. The lash of an ox whip can be tied to the whip stock with a multiple overhand knot. In entry 258, Ashley shows what he says is the universal farm method for tying a neck halter for a horse or cow. This halter won't choke the animal as it can't slip. In entry 259, Ashley says that the grass knot is the best bend for broken straps or any flat material. For carrying a water jug or bottle when going out in the field, a jar or jug sling can be used. Having gone through all the knots for the farmer, we move on to the fencer, with two entries describing practices that Ashley learned in Boston from a fencing master. The first is the method of wrapping a foil handle with twine. The twine is closely half-hitched into a helix. The second is a button made of well-waxed twine for the tip of the foil. Ashley says it's far superior to the commercial rubber button of his time, as a twine button will warn of its failure with a raveled end. The turns of this button should be very snug and even. It started with a clove hitch, and after the final surface turns are taken toward the tip, the end is pulled taut and cut off short. The final listing that we will cover in this video is a fireman, with the first entry being the sheet knot. For an emergency fire escape, strips of sheets and blankets can be tied together with a bend, consisting of a reef knot and two overhand knots. The fire escape knot is also used as an emergency fire escape. A Spanish bowline knot can be used to lower an injured or unconscious person. For hoisting a ladder, the loop end of a long bowline knot can be passed into the upper rung and back over the sidebar ends. Another way is to place a clove hitch around each sidebar under the upper rung before tying the bowline. The last entry for the fireman describes slinging a fireman's axe with an eye splice or a loop and two hitches. This concludes the entries for this video, but it doesn't finish all the listings for the letter F. The next listing is a fisherman, which Ashley devotes 10 pages to. So in the next video, we'll be solely looking at the entries for the fisherman.